Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and today I am here looking at a pretty unusual Spanish pistol. This is a ruby, however, it's a 45 caliber ruby that is a mechanical copy of the Browning model of 1911. Now when most people think ruby, they think of the 32 caliber blowback A-bar production pistols out of Spain. These were used in large numbers by the French and also the Italian armies in World War I, and then they were sold by the bucket load commercially, manufactured by upwards of probably 60 different companies in the A-bar region in Spain after World War I. They became, they were a very simple pistol, they became very popular because they were very cheap, they were pretty effective, they worked. Um, it was a great little budget handgun. Now, the trade name Ruby was actually a, uh, a trademarked or a copyrighted name belonging to the company Gabilando Isia or Gabilando y Resti. And kind of like Escalator or Kleenex or Xerox, that specific brand name got widely applied to the entire class of Ruby, or uh, <laughs> there I go doing it myself, to the entire class of A-bar nine shot 32 caliber blowback pistols. Well, after World War I, Gabilondo, which was a, a very good manufacturing company, one of the better ones in ABAR, they started expanding into other markets. They were looking for other interesting guns that they could make and sell. And one of the things they decided to do was to copy the American 1911. So this still uses the trade name Ruby because that was one of the brand names that Gabilondo had registered to himself. And this is, like I said, mechanically a copy of the 1911. It is a Browning tilting barrel locked breech pistol in 45 ACP. It actually has a somewhat longer grip than the standard 1911, and its magazine holds eight rounds instead of seven from the American issue gun. And what's really interesting is, well, to back up a step, a lot of people assume that everything that came out of Spain was a, a copy or a knockoff or not innovative. As a matter of fact, this pistol, developed in 1924, was actually the very first pistol, or the very first uh, patent, to use a captive recoil spring in an automatic pistol like this. It went on to be the inspiration for the captive recoil spring in the Polish uh, Viz 35, or Radom, pistol. And that was an innovation from Gabilondo in Spain under the Ruby trademark. So a lot of people underestimate those Spanish gun makers because, yeah, there were some of them that were really making junk, but there were some others who were making really quite good guns. Now, Gabilando would go on to become the Llama firm. The Llama name was trademarked in 1932. So uh, the timeline we're looking at here is this pistol was introduced in 1924, and in total, we know at least 656 of them were manufactured, because that's the serial number of this example. Not more than 1,000. This serial number is actually the highest one that's been documented that I know of. Um, probably there weren't as many as a thousand made, but it may have gotten close. And they were only being made for three years. By 1927, Gabilando looked at this thing and it just wasn't selling very well. And the conclusion he came to was that it really needed to be more like the 1911 in order to be popular. And so in 1927, he introduced a replacement model that was a near exact copy of the model of 1911, um, actually the 1911 A1. And that pistol under, which uh, once he registered the trade name Llama, was being sold under the Llama name, that one actually turned out to be a very successful pistol and was manufactured in a variety of calibers, 45 auto, nine millimeter Parabellum, nine millimeter Largo, among others. So why don't I bring the camera back here and let's take a closer look at the internals of this guy and some of the markings on it because there are a couple other interesting features that you can't see from that far back. So on the grip panels here we have a ruby logo with the trade name. We've got our serial number here on the frame. Something to note um, because we're going to be taking this apart in just a moment is that these pistols, like many Spanish pistols, are matched by assembly number, not serial number. So you'll see a different number on a lot of the internal parts. That assembly number is typically located under the left grip panel on these guns, and it's that number that you'll see used to match all the components. The serial number was applied after the gun was complete, and the serial number typically has no connection, no relation to the assembly numbers. Anyway, on the other side, we have our slide legend, Patent Ruby Caliber 45. Uh, pretty upfront there and simple. Of course, another one of the 
uh, Ruby logos on the grips. Now, for those of you who are familiar with llama pistols, you'll recognize this safety. This is a very distinctive llama style manual safety that uh, is used here. And you'll notice this is a distinct, distinctly different from the model of 1911, the American gun. So that's our manual safety. Another difference from the American pistols is that the Ruby 45 has a heel release for the magazine instead of a button on the frame. Pull this out. This holds eight rounds, which is one more than the 1911 did at the time. Uh, and it does have a longer grip frame as well. Now, now, before we go ahead and take apart the Ruby, let's do a quick comparison with the Colt here. This is a, a model of 1911 US Army property. Actually, this one is a first year of production, 1911. So it's a 1911 from 1911. So the Ruby, you can see, shares a lot of the very obvious uh, visual features. However, our grip angle is different. Uh, the Ruby has a straighter grip on it, or a, a more vertical grip. The beaver tail here, the, the back of the grip is different. This is much more like a 32 caliber Ruby, does not have a grip safety. The magazine release, like I said, is on the heel instead of being a button up here. And our extractor on the Ruby is an, in, is an external extractor, where on the Colt, it is internal, right there. Flipping over to the other side, you can see that the safety uh, catch is totally different. Uh, there is no slide release on the Ruby. The Ruby does lock open on an empty magazine, uh, but there is no slide release, and in order to close it, you simply pull the magazine out and the slide will drop closed. We, al we also have a difference in the barrel bushings. On the, the Colt, we have a, an actual plunger on the end of the recoil spring. As I mentioned earlier, the Ruby actually has a captive recoil spring, so it's a different system here. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and disassemble this. Disassembly procedure for the Ruby is actually very simple and uh, it's a creative little system. We have this checkered button on the frame. What I need to do, uh, and that comes through as this pin on the other side. What I'm, going, what I'm going to do for disassembly is open the slide so that this cutout lines up with that pin right there. And then I can push the pin through with my index finger, hold the slide back, pull that pin out. And then the slide comes right off the front of the pistol. Now that the slide is out, I can take my recoil spring here and pull it out. Like I said, that's a captive recoil spring right there. This was, again, the very first pistol to have, or the first pistol to have patented the concept of this captive recoil spring in this system. Now, much like a Colt. I'm going to rotate the barrel bushing around. There we go. We can pull our barrel bushing out. It's got a key in it, just like a Browning, like a Colt. And then the barrel comes out. This barrel is a little bit simpler than a Colt. It is linkless there and just works on a cam surface, kind of like a Browning High Power. And then it has our standard locking lugs on the top of the barrel which lock into a pair of recesses in the frame right here. So the back of the frame is pretty similar looking to a Colt. We've got our firing pin. We do not have the internal extractor. This instead has an external extractor right here and a pin right there holding it in place. There'll be a spring under the back end of this to keep tension on it. Other than that, mechanically quite similar internally to a Colt 1911. So in a nutshell, Gabilondo made a really, actually a pretty nice pistol here, a pretty faithful, mechanical, high quality copy of the Browning locking system. And ironically, it was actually not a good enough copy or not a close enough copy of the 1911 to really be successful on the commercial market. And it wasn't until 27 when he gave up on this pistol and went to making a much more, uh, much closer copy that he would really see significant commercial sales. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I think most people probably aren't even aware that there was a 45 caliber locked breech ruby being made in Spain. But, in fact, there weren't a lot, but there were a few of them like this one. So, if you enjoy this sort of content, please consider hopping over to patreon.com and supporting Forgotten Weapons. A donation of a dollar a month is all I ask, and it really goes a long way to keeping me 
traveling around finding cool early Spanish pistols like this one to show to you guys. Thanks for watching.